Hi students, this is Ms. Ty here. In this video, we will review the most tested topics on the new Algebra 1 regions. As you know, the Algebra 1 regions is changing and the first administration of that exam will happen this June. So I wanna make sure that you all are super prepared and you're going to ace this exam with flying colors. Let's jump right into our content. This is the breakdown of the upcoming Algebra 1 regions. If you notice, the topic that will be tested the most is of course, algebra. It's going to be 50 to 56% of the exam. This is broken down into four categories, seeing structure and expressions, arithmetic with polynomials and rational expressions, creating equations, reasoning with equations and inequalities. There are a plethora of math problems that fit those four criteria, but in this video, we will review four that I believe you need to know for the upcoming exam. Let's jump right in. The first category is called seeing structure in expressions. So I've chosen this problem to get you started. The problem states when X times X minus five times two X minus three is expressed as a polynomial in standard form, which statement about the resulting polynomial is true? I'm going to start by multiplying the expressions. The easiest place to start is to distribute X into X minus five. So I'm gonna multiply X times X and then X times negative five. So we're gonna end up with X squared minus five X. I did this because I prefer to multiply a binomial by a binomial, it's just so much easier. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and apply the FOIL method. We are gonna have X squared times two X, that's first. We're gonna have X squared times three. We're gonna have negative five X times two X and negative five X times three. So let's get started. When we multiply X squared times two X, we end up with two X cubed. Then we have outer X squared times three is plus three X squared. Inner negative five X times two X is going to be minus 10 X squared. And then last is negative five X times three, which will be negative 15 X. Now we need to combine like terms. Notice both three X squared and negative 10 X squared have an X squared in the term. So these are our like terms. When we combined three X squared minus 10 X squared, we have negative seven X squared. I will also bring down two X cubed and I'll bring down negative 15 X. So this is our final expression after multiplying X times X minus five times two X plus three. Now we need to interpret what's going on. I noticed that this expression does not have a constant term. Recall that a constant term is a number that has no variable attached to it. It is simply a number by itself. Our final expression has no constant term. Therefore, answer choice one is incorrect. The degree of this polynomial is three. Anytime we are looking for the degree of a polynomial, we're looking for the term with the biggest exponent, and that exponent will represent the degree of the polynomial. In this case, the degree is three. So we also know that answer choice three is incorrect. The number of terms is actually three. There are three distinct terms. Distinct means different. X cubed is different from X squared, which is different from X. So we have three terms in the final expression. So answer choice four is incorrect. But notice that the term with the biggest exponent is right here. And that term has a coefficient of two. We call the number two the leading coefficient because it accompanies the term with the biggest exponent. Therefore, answer choice two is correct. I like this problem because there's a lot of vocab. There's also some computation that you need to do with the expressions. So I believe this is a wonderful review for this content area. Let's continue. 
The second content area we need to prioritize is arithmetic with polynomials and rational expressions. I've pulled this problem to serve as an example of what you can expect on the new Algebra 1 regions. Let's get started. If c equals 2a squared minus 5 and d equals 3 minus a, then c minus 2d equals, and we need to identify the answer. So I'm gonna start off by just writing down c minus 2d, and I notice that I simply need to replace c with 2a squared minus 5 and d with 3 minus a. My next step is to distribute the negative two. So I don't treat this as a subtraction, I treat it as a negative number. In our future videos, I'll explain a little bit more as to why I do that. But the key here is you need to distribute the negative as well. And some of our students make the mistake of ignoring this negative. So we're gonna treat this as negative two times three, which is negative six, and negative two times negative a, which becomes positive 2a. Also notice there is no number written in front of the first expression. So we can almost treat it as if this expression has a one right in front of it. So of course, when we distribute one into this binomial, we get back the exact same binomial. One times 2a squared is 2a squared, and one times negative five is negative five. So that's how I interpret this particular expression. You're gonna have two a squared minus five, it stays the same, but because we're distributing a negative two with three minus a, we end up with negative six plus two a. You know the next step, right? We're going to combine like terms. So I'm taking a look at our four terms here, and I notice that only one term has a squared, so there are no like terms for that one, and only one term has simply an a, so there's no like terms there. But we do have two constants. We have negative five and negative six. And guess what, guys? That gives us negative 11. Now, I always put the constant term last because you always want your polynomial to go in descending order. So we're gonna start off with 2a squared in the front, and then we have 2a in the middle. And then when we combine like terms, we have negative 11 towards the end. So that is our final answer. Therefore, we would go with answer choice three. Let's continue. The third category we need to prioritize is called creating equations. A parking garage charges a base rate of $3.50 for up to two hours and an hourly rate for each additional hour. The sign below gives the prices for up to five hours of parking. Which linear equation can be used to find X, the additional hourly parking rate? I would start off by identifying the base rate. The base rate for the parking garage is $3.50 for up to two hours. That's going to be our initial base amount. So I will examine answer choice one and two very carefully. Three does not really come up in this problem at all, so I'm not going to go with that one. And then 350 times X wouldn't make sense because again, 350 is a base rate. It is a fixed one-time cost. So both of those answer choices seem to be incorrect. For answer choice three and four, they both are set equal to 1450. So we're going to be checking out what's going on here in our chart. So this represents four hours. So we know that our base price was 350. So I like that 350 shows up in answer choice three without a variable attached. And that represents two hours. And then I know that to go to the cost of 1450, we're adding an additional two hours for a total of four hours. And since our rate is going to be represented as a variable, it would make sense that we would have the two hours that's being added, right? Times X, which would represent our hourly rate. We're adding that to the initial base rate of $3.50, and that's going to give us $14.50. So of course, answer choice three is the correct answer. We're going to eliminate answer choice four because it really doesn't make sense. $9 was not the initial base rate, okay? So 
this topic is really inviting you to figure out how to translate some sort of a word problem or real world scenario into an equation or inequality. There are so many examples of these types of problems. So make sure you find uh, additional practice problems in this content area so that you can be positioned for success. Let's continue. The final category for our algebra topic is reasoning with equations and inequalities. I've chosen this problem because it requires you to provide a comparison of two different math problems. We're going to compare the quantities in column A and column B. Column A says the value of X in this system and column B says the value of Y in the system. So we're going to need to solve both system of equations in order to identify the value of X in column A and the value of Y in column B. Let's get started. If you guys remember, when you're solving a system, the first thing I tend to look at is what the equations look like. So right now, both of these equations are already in standard form. Recall that standard form is AX plus BY equals C. So if I see both equations expressed in standard form, my knee-jerk reaction is to use the elimination method. If I see one of the equations where one of the variables is isolated, then I'm gonna use the substitution method. And if there's no requirement to use algebra, guess what? I'm using my calculator because I'm gonna go ahead using the TI-84, I'm going to graph those equations so I can extract the solution. But let's jump into the elimination method. There is a bit of a checklist that I usually give my students, and it is this. We're looking for the same variable. So I want to ensure that the variables are lined up, which in this case, they did it for us already. The X's are lined up and the Y's are lined up. Then I'm looking for the same coefficient, but we're really referring to the absolute value of the coefficient, right? So like the number that accompanies the sign. So in this case, even though it's not written, both Y terms have a coefficient of one. Again, this excludes the signs. And then the last step that I tell my students is you want different signs, right? So I want to ensure that one is positive and one is negative. So in this case, because Y is already set up for us, we have to do such little work in order to get started. I will go ahead and choose the Y term to eliminate. We have the same variable, same coefficient, different signs. Now we can move forward with our elimination process. To eliminate the Y terms, we're going to now add our equations. 4X plus 3X equals 7X. Notice that negative 1Y plus 1Y cancels out, and that gives us basically zero. So I'm just not even gonna write it down because it completely cancels out. We don't need to write it again. And then 11 plus three is 14. Our last step is to divide both sides of this equation by seven. So we have X equals two for this system. Now, please notice they did not need us to find both the X and Y. So I'm going to stop right here because we already have the answer for what is the value of X in this particular system. So we know that X equals two, for column A. The next step is to identify the value of Y in the system listed in column B. So let's write out our system of equations right over here. And notice our X terms are already set up for us, right? We have same variable. So the X terms are lined up and one in the same. We have the same coefficient. Again, we're excluding the signs here. They're both a one. And then we have different signs. Uh, this first X term is positive and the bottom X term is negative. So we're good to go. Now we can move forward with adding our equations. When we add these two equations, notice the X terms will cancel out. X minus X is zero. And now we have negative five Y plus four Y is simply negative Y. And then negative eight plus five is simply negative three. Our last step is to divide both sides by negative one, and we end up with y equals three. I just wanted to just touch on that really quickly, guys. Just keep in mind, if you have a negative y, there is an imaginary one right here that you can go ahead and fill in. 
So that makes it super clear that negative one is being multiplied by y, and now we need to divide both sides of this equation by negative one. When we cancel out the negative one, we end up with y equals positive three. So let's write out our answers up here so we can now complete the problem because we're still not done yet. So the question is saying, which quantity is greater? So it is clear that the quantity in column B is greater, right? Because three is greater than two. And so B is going to be the correct answer. If you learned something in this video, please go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe. And let me know if there are any additional topics that you'd like me to cover because it makes me so excited to create these videos for you. But I also love it even more when I hear from you. So guys, I will see you in the next video. Toodles.